Hello everyone, Adelaide Jones here, and today I'm going to talk about how I use digital notebooks to support students who are working asynchronously and just keep track of what we're doing in a virtual world after the pandemic. I sell all of these notebooks individually on my Teachers Pay Teachers, or you can buy what you see here, which is this slide, with access to over 10 different styles. So there are many ways to use these and I will link the ways um, that I use them down below and tell you timestamps in this video of where you can find those if you wanna skip ahead. So let's just talk about some basics here. We have all of these notebooks and if you purchase the slide, um, you can share this with your team, with your students, whatever, and that will allow them to click on one of these tabs and make their own copy of the notebook. Now, they'll be able to see this, but they won't be able to edit this. You're going to have to go to File and make a copy to have your own. So there are many styles here. If you don't like any of them, that's fine. I recommend grabbing this guy, which is a blank notebook template, and that will allow you to change out the background and the cover. You can do that on any of them, but starting from the blank one seems to work best for me. And let me show you how to do that. So this is my blank notebook template. And first I wanna change the background. I go up here to background, color. I can choose a color or a gradient option, or I can choose an image. I can upload something from my computer already or photos, or I can go to Google image search and find something I like. I mean, I select one that I think looks great and I press insert and then if I want it to apply to all of my slides I say add to theme now you can see that background in all of my slides if I want to change the cover I can go to insert image search on the web and I'm going to type in blue notebook those are usually two words but you know Okay, so I can insert that. And oh, this one has a background that I don't really want. So I'm gonna go up here and click Crop Image and I can change the background. I remove the cover that I no longer want, resize, twist it around a little bit and we're ready to go custom notebook in no time at all if I want to add text to my notebook I go to insert text box draw over the spot I want I can angle it if I would like to and then just type in the box of course, I can change the font, style, size, all that good stuff. All right, now over to the side, I have tabs. These tabs are linked to these slides. So if I'm putting dates or maybe lesson numbers, I just type them right here. So let's say that slide number two here is going to be lesson one. On my first slide here, I'll put a one or lesson one, whatever I wanna type. Now, when students are at the cover, they come over here, click, and it goes directly to that slide. There's some basic formatting on how to customize this to meet your needs. Now let's talk about share settings. Up here, there's a button that says share. When we click it, it's gonna automatically say restrict it. Only people at it can open with this link. You need to change that to either be your organization, that's the name of my organization, or anyone with the link, which is what I prefer to do just in case my students are logged on to a device other than their school device. And now this link can be copied um, and shared with students so they have access. A question that I get a lot is, is this something that students type in? Is this something that teachers type in? What's going on here? And the, it's a kind of a complicated question um, because you can do so many different things with this and I'm going to show you some of those options. Sometimes the students can type in it, sometimes the teachers do it, sometimes the teachers can push slides out to others. It's all up to you. 
One of the simplest ways to use these is as if it were a simple notebook, you know, no different than if you had students buy like a composition notebook for journaling or taking notes, same deal, but this is digital. This means that the students type in it themselves and it is not necessarily shared with you unless you go through those steps. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So let's say you are giving a lecture and a student wants to take notes. All they would need to do is go to insert text box and go over the space they want to type. Maybe they would type the lesson title here or topic. And then insert text box again. This is where they would take notes. If there's an image that might help them, like maybe you're talking about the brain, so they might want to get a image of the brain. They would type that in the box here and copy it over. If you would like students to turn their notes in, you can ask them to make a copy of just one of the slides with the notes for that topic and turn it in on your learning management system. Or you can have students share this whole notebook with you, but that's really hard to go and check each one individually. I really recommend that you have them share one slide at a time. Another way to use this is as a way for teachers to push out the lessons to students. I know that we have learning management systems such as Canvas or Google Classrooms to do this already, but this is just a one-stop shop for everything. I have I read a quote earlier this year that said, um, every click is another opportunity for a student to get lost. And I've really thought about that. So that's why I put my lessons in this format where the lesson 11 is broken down into four sections essentially. And there's a video of me teaching each part. So I've pre-recorded what I want to tell them. And then right here is a link to a, a worksheet that they need to do or a page in the book that they need to follow in order to do this assignment. So all of these little Bitmoji icons are actually linked to something. Like this one is linked to a Canvas quiz. This one is linked to um, another lesson story which they need in order to do this assignment. In order to do that, you simply click on an image that you want to link and then uh, find the link that you want to put there. If you want this to link to something in your learning management system, such as a Canvas quiz, you just click on the image that you want to link, go get the URL, which is what's up here in the box, of your quiz, copy it, come back over here, press Control and K at the same time, and that pops up this hyperlink box, and you paste your quiz and press Apply. Now, this image is a hyperlink, and it goes directly to what you need. And there's a video right here to show students how it's done. Nice and easy. Another way to use this tool is as a support for students with disabilities or maybe um, EL students. I'm a special education teacher, and the way I co-teach anymore is actually creating supports and scaffolds for students with disabilities by looking at the lesson that is uploaded in my Gen Ed Teachers Learning Management System. This is, so whatever the math teacher in this instance has already done. And then I record myself doing the assignment as if I were a student from start to finish. I go through every part, explain every part. I upload the video here. I put the date on the side and I link um, images to any resources that may, they may need. This one links to Desmos, which is a calculator that I want them to use. I also link it to my Zoom if need be. Um, for example, students were taking a quiz, so I had a time for the students to come to me during class time if they want extra help. They just click there and they go straight to me. And then I also insert images that I click and they can bring them up even larger. My school eventually switched to a block schedule, so now this is a little more manageable too. I also made some hints for their progress monitor this week. So we click there and it'll get them to the correct resource. 
So that's another way to use it. Students do not um, write in this. It's just a way for teachers to present material to students. And all of my kids know that if they're struggling in math, oh, I should go check the extra help notebook today. Another way to use this resource is as an interactive notebook, meaning students might have little boxes that they drag and drop, um, things like that. That's not different than any other Google document that you may have used in this way. It's just done on slides instead. You can always put um, elements out here that can be dragged and dropped to the correct boxes. If you do not have all of your material for say all nine weeks done at once, maybe you only have the ability to do one slide at a time right now, which is totally fine. Um, you can use a tool called Slip and Slide. It is a Google extension that allows you to send uh, slides to students in their notebook one slide at a time. And down below, I'll link a really great video that shows you how to use that. So that's also an option. I hope this helps and we explore the different ways you can use this notebook. I know that there are many more and I would love to hear what you do in your own classroom. Please like and follow and subscribe and I'll be sure to make more of these when I get requests. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye.